Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Uh, sorry about my voice, feeling a little bit sick today, but just wanted to show you something I've been working on that I thought you might find interesting, and that is um, triplanar mapping with runtime virtual texture blending. So normally when you sample a um, runtime virtual texture in a material, so you might have, say for example, base color, and you use that to blend with an object like a mesh, it looks pretty good as long as you're projecting in the XY plane. But as soon as you start um, projecting in the Z plane, like you would with a tall object or objects with a steep slopes uh, or vertical slopes, um, you start to get just insane amounts of stretching um, <clears throat> because it's basically sampling the same XY coordinate. Um, only the Z coordinates are changing and We've just got a top-down projection to work with. Um, but what I've created over here is actually a um, triplanar mapped runtime virtual texture sample. So you can see here, it does not have the same stretching. And here it is on this prop. So as I move this prop up, the um, you know, the parts that would normally project fine, of course, still project fine, but uh, you don't get stretching on the sides here. So if I move this over, right? So if, you know, if you wanted to blend this asset down like this instead and have it be partially buried, the normal technique, you wouldn't get a good looking blend, right? with the triplanar blend, <clears throat> you would. So let's go ahead and go into this material here. I'm gonna change this to this, so you can see the triplanar in action here. You can see here. So what's happening is that as it um, samples up the side of an object, I'm offsetting the um, UV coordinates directionally based off of how much it has gone up compared to uh, the height of the virtual texture. Right, so. Uh, this does have some flaws, like so for example, because it's continuing to go up and up and up, uh, these really high points are going to be sampling really far away, right? So this D8 that you can see right here is actually sampling this part of the landscape. Um, and that means that, you know, if you have a really high part on one side and a really high part on the other, one will be sampling way over here while the other one might be sampling way over there. And because those are sampling different parts of the landscape, uh, they might pull different textures. But generally speaking, most of the time people are only using this to um, to sample just like the bottom most edge, right? So like down here, in which case that's a non-issue, right? So it's only going to be sampling just a few uh, a few centimeters or whatever away from its original position. And so you get, uh, you know, a nice triplanar blend even on vertical surfaces. And uh, this is specifically using my single sample triplanar mapping uh, technique. So if you haven't seen that video, uh, you may want to look at it because uh, when we open up this node here, you can see here is the, um, the triplanar map uh, mask generation. Right, so um, if I look at this, for example, you can see the, the dithering for interpolating between different coordinate systems. So this is fundamentally the same thing. And that's going into the world position. All right, so on the um, XY plane, when projected from above, I'm just using the origin original XYZ coordinates 
and pumping that into the world position. But when I'm, <clears throat> when I'm projecting from uh, left or right, I'm taking the difference between the um, world position and the um, virtual texture sample, getting this uh, gradient, same way you do when you're doing your blending, right? You get the, the gradient from the starting at zero where the virtual texture begins, its height, and then up in world position. And I'm just uh, multiplying that value by red or green. and then adding it back to the original coordinate system. And then all of that comes together to create, um, let me see if I can show this here, an offset. All right, so here's the final offset going into the uh, world position to push the um, texture sample uh, position to a different spot. And just like with any other time you're mess messing with um, UVs, it'll mess up your MIP maps. So here I've got the MIP level um, specified in the sampler. I'm just manually computing it um, using the compute MIP level node, taking in the world position divided by 100 and the texture size and that will make sure that my MIPS are correct. But just to, um, but if I pull this up here and I go to this and set it to default, now you can see these, uh, of ugly transition areas where the mid maps are wrong. And if I set it back to mid level, you can see that's fixed. To unlit here, you can see the dithering if we get really close. But as soon as I go to lit, just like with the um, single sample, sample triplanar, that gets fixed. Right. And then if I uh, go ahead and switch this back to grass on my landscape, set this back to a same value, right. see that anywhere below the landscape here, same thing. So. Yeah, just figured I might show you guys how to solve that stretching, just again to give you a second to observe the nodes here. That's that. Thanks for watching.